Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now recently I've been spending some quality time with the GameCube, primarily because I've been testing some of those new HDMI video adapters that have come out recently on the market. I've been loving those. However, I realize I haven't done a video dedicated to my entire GameCube collection. So for this video, I'm gonna break those into three separate categories. The first being games published by Nintendo. The second one is gonna be third-party exclusives to the GameCube. And then the last one's gonna be some interesting straggle Let's take a look. I want to start off by mentioning that I have a little over 70 games in my collection. That's out of 558 that were released in North America. So as you can see, it's not one of my bigger collections, but I do have most of the games that I want. As you guys know, I typically try to capture gameplay footage. However, for this video, that would just take me weeks to do. So I've cherry picked some of the games that I want to show gameplay footage. But for the most part, I'm going to be talking through this video. We're gonna start with the games that were published by Nintendo. And Geist is a game that a lot of people forget about. This is a first person shooter that has its own vibe. This is kind of a unique game where in the very beginning of it, you are a soldier and you die and you become a poltergeist. For most of this game, you are playing as a ghost and you do ghost-like things. You're taking over people's bodies, you are inhabiting inanimate objects like trash cans and uh, vending machines, things like that, trying to scare people. It's actually a really cool game. It's not perfect by any means, but if you have a GameCube and you like first person shooters, you wanna try something different, definitely check out Geist. Here we have two kind of unusual games. This is Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix, which is of course a dance rhythm game, but it features mostly Mario characters, kind of a, a funky little find there, and then also Kirby Air Ride, which is unlike any other Kirby game released so far. Uh, a little bit of a hidden gem, I would say. I have two Wario games on the GameCube. The first one is Wario World, which is a platforming beat-em-up game, which is kind of cool. And then you have WarioWare Inc. I love these mini party games, and anytime Nintendo releases them, I have to pick them up on whatever platform they come out on. Battalion Wars is another I would say hidden gem on the GameCube. It was originally going to be an Advanced Wars game. Uh, if you're familiar with those on the Game Boy Advance and the DS, those are turn-based tactical strategy games, but this is a little bit different. As you can see here, it is a third-person real-time tactics game. And uh, you know, it's very Nintendo feeling, but it also feels a little bit like SOCOM because you have other soldiers that you are controlling on the battlefield as well. Super fun game to play. Uh, if you have a GameCube, I think you should pick this up. You guys know I'm a Metroid fan and the GameCube got Metroid Prime and Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. These are two fantastic, very unique first person shooters. And uh, what can I say about them other than they're completely unique. They were a total surprise when they were released because I think most people like me were like, ah, first person, Metroid, is that gonna work? But yeah. These are great games. Here are two games that I'm familiar with the franchises, although I haven't really played them a lot on the GameCube. That is, of course, Animal Crossing. I played that mostly on the 3DS with Kelsey, and then also Pikmin, this is the original. I actually played Pikmin 3 quite a bit on the Wii U, but really fun games. Here is Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, and uh, I think this is the first Paper Mario game that I ever played. It was one of the first games I got with my GameCube and uh, just adored this game, so much fun. I love the real-time combat. I love the, the art style, the, the paper flat art style for this. Uh, absolute classic, you must own this. It's a Nintendo console, and of course there are going to be Zelda games on it. Now you see two versions of Zelda Twilight Princess here. The one on the left, of course, is the one that we got in North America, but the one on the right is a very curious one. That is a 
online Japanese only version for the GameCube. Remember that it came out at the same time in Japan, both on the GameCube and also the Wii. Well, the GameCube version did not have a retail release in Japan, and so you could only get this one if you ordered it directly on Nintendo's website. So it's a little bit of an uncommon version of the game, and it's cool to have in the collection. I am a big fan of the original Wave Race on the Nintendo 64. Actually, I think the Nintendo 64 version is really a console seller, uh, at least what it was for me when it first came out. And uh, because of that, I was really looking forward to the GameCube sequel. And I have to say, for the most part, while the visuals are obviously much improved, it's it's lacking it's lacking something. There's I don't know if, I don't know what it is about Blue Storm, but I don't like this one as much. I. It's hard for me to put my finger on. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments below because, like I said, the graphics are beautiful, but I just don't like it as much. I don't know why. These next two games, I was horrified when I pulled them out of my collection because I haven't looked at them in a couple years. And look at these, these cases are crap. I don't know, I don't know why I bought them like this. I've had them for years and I just completely forgot. So I need to upgrade the cases because obviously those are, not good, and and the reason why I feel that way is because they're both really good games. Uh, Batten Katos, I believe that's how you pronounce that. That's a really cool Japanese style RPG. Beautiful graphics, fantastic gameplay. And then of course you have Star Fox Adventures, which I know didn't start as a Star Fox game, and it doesn't really fit in with the rest of the franchise, but I enjoyed it quite a bit. Here's the first game that I played when I got my GameCube. I was so excited to play this game. It's Eternal Darkness, and this did not disappoint. It is a epic, epic graphic adventure game. Uh, what can I say about this? I mean, the storyline is crazy. It messes with your sanity. Uh, it pretends to delete your, your memory card. <laughs> it messes with your television. It's really cool. It's definitely gonna remind you of say the old school Resident Evil games. If you like those style of games, you're gonna feel right at home here. Highly recommended game. I guess that they were gonna try kickstarting a sequel and that never got off the ground. It's so disappointing. Here you have two more Zelda games. Of course you have Wind Waker, which I am a huge fan of the graphic style of that game. Really love its design. And then you have The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time with the bonus Master Quest. What's cool about that is that you have two versions of the N64 Classic on one disc, as well as a never before released Master Quest, which is a remixed version of the Dungeons and Challenges. But what's cool is that they've upgraded the resolution to 640 by 480, and they've added Dolby Pro Logic Sound. Here's a game that is a bit of a hidden gem, a bit of a surprise, that is called Custom Robo. Now, for most people in North America, we're not very familiar with this series, which is a shame because this is actually the fourth game in the franchise and uh, it's really cool. It's a Japanese RPG, but then you go into these holographic arenas here where you can build out your custom mech and then take on other mechs in real-time combat. It reminds me a little bit of Virtual On. Uh, super fun, really fast-paced, great game. It seems like every Nintendo console has to have a Mario Kart and the GameCube has Double Dash, a game I put a lot of hours into, and then also Mario Golf. You know, people ask me what are some of my favorite sports games, and I love these arcade golf games, and uh, this is no exception. Actually, uh, Mario Golf is right up there with Hot Shots Golf for me, super fun. Chibi Robo, oh man. <laughs> I, I do love these kind of wacky Japanese games. And uh, what do I say about this? Well, I, I, I guess I should admit that I haven't played this game a ton. Uh, I know that there's this version on the GameCube and then they also released a, like a 2D platforming game on the 3DS, which I played a little bit as well. But from what I can tell, you play a little robot that is trying to acquire happy points. And uh, what's cool about this game is that you're going around a person's house, like a Japanese family's house, trying to make them happy by cleaning up trash, cleaning the floor, things like that. You get your happy points, but you'll notice that there's a little timer down in the bottom. That's because your robot will run out of energy. And so he has to run over and plug himself into the wall every once in a while. Uh, yeah, a really wacky, crazy game. Uh, I can't wait to play it more. 
some more GameCube staples here. You have Super Mario Sunshine, which was somewhat controversial at the time, although I think over time now people have embraced it a little bit more. And then you have the surprise, which is Luigi's Mansion, which is kind of like a Ghostbusters game of all things. So really cool to have. The Fire Emblem series has been around, believe it or not, since the Famicom. It's a series of turn-based tactical games that have just a long history, and thankfully the GameCube got a really good one. Now, what's interesting about this game is that it has become one of the more expensive and collectible GameCube games, and I'm not 100% sure why. It might be because the graphics are fantastic and the game is really well made, and, you know, Fire Emblem just has thousands, perhaps millions of fans worldwide, but uh, this is one of the games where you'll often find it for $100 or more for a complete copy. Now, I didn't pay anywhere near that, thankfully, but uh, it's definitely a cool game to have in the collection. And speaking of cool games to have in the collection, I love these two games, Donkey Konga and Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. Now what makes these games so cool, as you can see there, they use the DK bongos that were designed specifically for the GameCube. A neat little feature of this is in the center there, you'll see that there's a microphone. And that's because in addition to playing the bongos, you actually clap your hands. I need to do a let's play of this because it is so fun, so silly. The GameCube is home to an excellent version of F-Zero. This is F-Zero GX here. And as you can tell based on the footage, it's super fast and the controls are very tight. This is a really fun game. You know, not gonna be for everybody because the speed is absolutely out of control. But the thing I like about it is that when you lose in this game, it feels like it's because you did something wrong. You don't know the the tracks well enough and uh as you play you just get better and better it's a really great game i love it the gamecube got some cool resident evil games that were exclusive at least exclusive for a while i believe you can now get these on the wii and also the playstation 4 but here you have resident evil zero as well as a remake of the original resident evil oh yeah now we're talking star wars so rogue leader rogue squadron 2 I believe was a launch title for the GameCube and still stands as one of the best Star Wars games ever made. You play this game even today and it's a ton of fun. And then you also have the third one. This is uh, Rebel Strike. Not quite as good because they felt like they had to kind of step up the game a little bit and there's some on foot stuff. Not as good, but still decent. But if you have a GameCube, definitely pick up these two. You guys know I like my bullet hell shooters, and there are two really good ones on the GameCube that I have here. Ikaruga is a little bit collectible, a little bit sought after, and then you have Chaos Field, which is a bit of a hidden gem that not a lot of people talk about, but these are both very good bullet hell style shooters. Here are two unusual games that are exclusive to the GameCube. Now these are third party games here, of course, but you have Tube Slider, which is a, uh, I'm gonna say it's a budget style F-Zero slash Wipeout game. Not great, but you can usually get it for under 10 bucks. And then you have Space Raiders by the guy who created Space Invaders. Again, eh, kind of budget titles, but they're, they're curiosities if you're going for a complete collection or if you just want games that were exclusive to the GameCube. Here are two Harvest Moon games that I know absolutely nothing about. <laughs> I don't even remember how these ended up in my collection. I want to say maybe I got them at a garage sale. Maybe somebody donated them to me. I have no idea. You know, in general, I don't really play a lot of these life simulator games. I know that they're super popular, but I, I don't know. I, should I play them? Let me know in the comments below. Oh boy, I am so glad that I got Gotcha Force years ago because right now this game goes for about 150 to $200 complete. But the reason for that is simple, is because it is exclusive to the GameCube, it's made by Capcom, and it's an arcade fighting slash third person shooting game that's really fun. Also on the GameCube, you have Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes. This is a remake of the original PlayStation 1 Metal Gear Solid. And uh, you know, some people are not crazy about this. I think it's pretty cool because you have brand new graphics as well as all new CGI cutscenes. 
here are two games, well, I guess three games actually, that I haven't really put a lot of time into, so I don't know much about that. It's uh, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Don't know what that is. Don't know how it even got into my collection. And then here you have a two pack, which is something you don't really see anymore, but it's Outlaw Golf and then Darkened Sky. Again, two games I haven't really put a ton of time into. I don't have a lot of Steelbook versions of games in my collection, even though I like them quite a bit, but somehow I ended up with this one here. This is Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. And uh, like I said, it showed up in my collection. It's kind of weird because I didn't know that there were any Steelbook versions of GameCube games, but all right, there it is. Some more random third party releases on the GameCube. You have iNinja. Now this came out on PlayStation 2 and also I believe on the Xbox. Really fun third person platforming game. And then you have SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Now that is a fantastic game. I know, I know it's a SpongeBob game, but trust me, that's a really fun game. During this era, I was playing a lot of Tony Hawk Pro Skater, and you see two of them here. I think I have a Tony Hawk game on pretty much every system during that time. I just happen to have uh, Pro Skater 3 and also Underground on the GameCube. 3D platformers were all the rage during this time, and uh, somebody sent me these. I forget who it was, but this is Ty the Tasmanian Tiger 1 and 2. Now, admittedly, I haven't played these yet, but I've heard very good things about it. I think that these are just some of those platforming games that just went under the radar. Again, there was a lot of them during this time period and it was very easy to get overlooked. I've mentioned before on my channel that one of my favorite James Bond games of all time is Everything or Nothing. And this came out on the PlayStation 2 and also the Xbox 360. Uh, I have it here on the GameCube just, just because I love it so much. If you like James Bond, you gotta check this one out because it's completely original, but EA made it to feel like a real brand new movie. It's very well done. And then sitting next to that is a Spyro game that admittedly I have not had time to play. Although it's interesting because it is a Sierra release. So Sierra published it. I doubt that they actually developed it because at this time, the Sierra that I know and love was pretty much no more. They were just a, a name, uh, a publisher. So, uh, but you know, I love to know what you guys think of this Spyro game. Is it even worth checking out? Let me know. Here are two games that, dare I say, are hidden gems. Yes, I will say that. The first one being 13. This is a first person shooter based on a graphic novel, I believe, but what's cool about it is that it has a graphic novel style. Very cool, very unique looking. And then you have The Haunted Mansion, which is an action 3D platformer. This is based on the popular Disney ride. And uh, you know, you look at it and you're like, oh man, how could this possibly be any fun? But it is, it's, it's actually designed for kids and adults and it's got great puzzles. It's got a great atmosphere. The only thing about it is that the graphics aren't great, but it's a pretty cool game. So if you can get it for a couple bucks, definitely check it out. Ah oh, yes, Beautiful Joe 1 and 2. These are groundbreaking beat-em-ups by Capcom when they first came out. As a matter of fact, the original game, when that came out, it got nearly universal acclaim. I mean, almost perfect scores across the board. It was just a really fun breath of fresh air in the beat-em-up genre. I remember playing it for the first time, just having a blast. So really fun games if you haven't played them yet. You guys know me, I do love my racing games, and uh, at this time, there were a bunch of great arcade racing games, Burnout series being one of them. Now, I only have the original Burnout on GameCube, uh, which, which is an okay game, you know, going back to it, it's not as groundbreaking as it once felt. Uh, definitely Burnout 2, 3, and Revenge definitely stepped it up a little bit, but uh, and then also I have ATV 2, now, this is by Acclaim, and I think that they also put these out on the PlayStation 2, if I'm not mistaken. But again, I haven't played a ton of that yet. Here are two RPGs that are more alike than you might imagine. The first one being Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, and then of course you have X-Men Legends. Now, what makes these very similar is that they are top-down, real-time action RPGs. The first one being, of course, a D&D license, a Forgotten Realms license, and then, of course, X-Men being, you know, the comic book characters. 
This was also around the time that people actually cared about the Medal of Honor series. And uh, I have two of them here, Frontline and Rising Sun. So sad how far this series has fallen. I remember really enjoying these games. Now, I imagine if I went back now, eh, you know, they're probably really dated, but yeah, at the time they were pretty cool. I don't play a ton of fighting games, but here I have two, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance and then Soul Calibur 2. And at this time during the Soul Calibur series that each one of the different systems had specific characters in it. So of course, being a Nintendo console, you have Link. Here we have the Mega Man Anniversary Collection, which came out on pretty much every system at the time, although people really don't like the GameCube version. And that's because they kind of messed up the button assignment. They, they messed up the jump and fire buttons. And so people really hate it for that reason. I haven't played it enough to honestly have an opinion about that. And then next to that, we have the Pac-Man compilation there. Now what's cool about this is that Pac-Man Versus actually supports the Game Boy Advance link and has some pretty cool multiplayer features to it. And here we have Killer7, which has to be one of the most stylish and weirdest games I've ever played. It's uh, it's hard to describe, but I mean, at its core, it's kind of an on-rail shooter uh, with a really weird, crazy Japanese story. And then next to that is just a random Lego Star Wars game. These were all the rage back in the day, and they're still really fun today. And then to round it out here, I have a couple random licensed games. The first one being The Incredibles. That just happens to be probably my favorite Pixar movie of all time, and that's a 3D platforming game. And then next to that is Beach Bandits, which is a Nickelodeon show, I assume. I don't even know how that got into my collection. All right, guys, well, that is my modest GameCube collection, but I know there are hundreds more games released for the system. I'd love to know down in the comments what other games you think I should add to my collection. Please let me know. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, and take care. If you look closely at the thumbnail for this video, you'll notice that I actually have some sports titles that I didn't mention, some stuff like couple Maddens, a uh, Tiger Woods golf game, things like that. It's simply because I've bought a couple gaming lots over the years and, you know, they come with sports titles and I, I keep them because they're pretty much worthless. It's not like you can sell them anyways, but anyways, really fun video to do. I hope you guys like this. Thanks so much for watching.